Hello, this is Haku the Bean, and uh, I'm here to read to you a, an SCP article about something. I can't remember what it was, but it's something. I guess we'll see when we get into it. Please like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel at the end of the video, obviously. Item number SCP-55 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures Object is to be kept within in a 5x5 by 2.5 meter square room constructed of cement 50 e centimeter thickness with a Faraday cage surrounding the cement walls. It accesses via a heavy containment door measuring 2 by 2.5 meters. Constructed on bearings to, to ensure the door closes and locks automatically, unless held open and deliberately. Security guards are not to be posted outside SV-55's room. It is further advised that all personnel maintaining or studying other SVP objects in the vicinity try to maintain a distance of at least 50 meters from the geometric, geometric center of the room, as long as this is reasonably practical. practical. Description SCP-55 is a self-keeping secret or anti-meme. Information about SCP-55's physical appearance as well as its nature, behavior, and origins is self-classifying. To clarify, how Site-19 originally acquired SCP-55 is unknown. When SCP-55 was obtained and by whom is unknown. SCP-55's physical appearance is unknown. It is not indescribable or invisible. Individuals are, are perfectly capable of entering SV-55's container and observing it, taking mental or written notes, making sketches, taking photographs, and even making audio or video or recordings. An excessive log of such observations is on file. However, information about SCP's physical appearance leaks out of a human mind soon after such an observation. Individuals was tasked with describing SV-55 afterwards find their minds wandering and lose interest in the task. Individuals tasked with sketching a copy of SCP of a photo of SV-55 are unable to remember what the photograph looks like, as are researchers. There's overseeing these tests. Security first now have observed SCP-55 via closed circuit television cameras emerge after a full shift, exhausted and effectively amnesiac about the effect about the events of the previous hours. Who authorized the construction of SCP-55's containment room? Why it was constructed this way, or what the part or of the described containment procedures may be, are all unknown. Despite SCP-55's container being easily accessible, all personnel at Site-19 claim no knowledge of SCP-55's existence when challenged. All of these facts are periodically rediscovered, usually by chance readers of this file, causing a great deal of alarm. The safe concern lasts minutes at most, before the matter is simply forgot about. A great deal of scientific data has been recorded from SCP-55, but cannot be studied. At least one attempt has been made to destroy SCP-55, or possibly move it from containment to at night at site 19 to another site, meaning failure for reasons unknown. SCP-55 may present a major physical threat and indeed may have killed hundreds of personnel and we would not know it. Certainly it, can, it, it presents a gigantic mimetic mental threat, hence its header classification. Document 55-1 An analysis of SV-55 The author 
The author puts forth or the hypothesis that SP-55 was never formally acquired by Blank and is in fact an autonomous or remotely controlled agent, inserted it at Site-19 by an unidentified third party for one or all of the following purposes. To silently observe or interfere with activities at Site-19, to silently observe or interfere with activities at other SCP locations, to silent and observe observe or interfere with activities of humanity worldwide, to silently observe or interfere with it as with other SCP objects, or to silently observe or interfere with blank. No action to counter any of these central threats is suggested or indeed they're like actually possible. Addendum A. Hey, if this thing is really an anti meme, why doesn't the fact that it's an anti meme get wiped? We must be wrong about that somehow. Wait a minute, what if we were to keep notes about what it isn't? What do we remember those? Bartolomo Hughes, Hughes, NSA. Document 55 2. Report of John Marachek. Survey team in 1955, I'm not reading all that, was successfully able to enter SCP-55's container and ascertain the appearance and to some degree the nature of the object. Notes were taken according to the project methodology. See blank. After which the container was sealed again. Extract from a, a, a transcript of personnel debriefing follows. Okay. Okay, I'm going to uh, I'm going to need to ask you some questions about number fifty five now. Number one, SCP object fifty five, the object you just examined. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't think we have a fifty five. Okay then, blank. I'd like you to tell me what you've been digging for the past two hours. What I. I don't know. Okay, then, do you remember er, that we all, all agreed it wasn't spherical? That, what wasn't? Oh, right. It isn't round at all. Object 55 isn't round. So remember it now? Well, no, I mean, I don't know what it is, but I, I know there is one. It's something you can't remember, and it's not a sphere. Wait a minute, what's not a sphere? Object 55. Object what? Doc, do you remember agreeing that something wasn't shaped like a sphere? Oh, right! It appears to be possible to remember what SCP-55 is not, negations of fact, and to repeatedly deduce its existence from these memories. Personnel involved in, in the survey Report moderate levels of disorientation and, and psychological trauma associated with cycles of repeated memory and forgetfulness of SCP-55. However, no long-term behavior or health problems were observed, and psych assessments of survey personnel showed consistent reports of this distress fading over time. Recommendations: It may be it, it worthwhile to post at least one staff member capable of remembering the existence of. SV-55 to each critical site. Just in case. We need to talk about S about 55. Can I smoke? This time, the receptionist narrows her eyes at 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 Marion. No, she says. 
You... No, you can't smoke anywhere on Site 200. Just because it's an administration building doesn't mean we don't have lungs or labor law. Marion notices ex ex aspiration on the young woman's face. I've asked you that before, haven't I? Twice in the last quarter hour, the receptionist says. You must really need a smoke. She's genuinely puzzled at the repeated question. I'm just doing a bad job of concealing her puzzlement. You think this is like memento, don't you? Marion offers charitably. You think I have no long-term memory and that if I just stay in one place for too long, I forget why I'm there? The receptionist is only just old enough to remember that Phil. I guess? Marian smiles sympathetically and shakes her head. <laughs> the voice I gave her was wrong. Okay. Marian smiles sympathetically and shakes her head. It's nothing so simple. Minutes pass. She toys with her lighter. She's turning 50 this year and slowly graying. Well on her way out of petite, it towards little old lady. In her bag, her phone beeps because it's time for a pill. But she tells it to write her later. There's a slight tremble in her fingers, but that's not age-based infirmity. That's just ordinary nerves. She's nervous because she's here to mean O5, and O5s are scary. O5s never want to see you for a small thing. It's the end of the world or nothing. Finally, 40 minutes late, the door to the inner office opens. Four or five high-ranked foundationers spill out, carrying laptops or briefcases. As a group, they head straight past reception and out to the cars which are waiting. Marion recognizes a few of the faces. The site 19 director, the head recruiter for Western Europe, then Latins in her direction. Once they're gotten, O5-8 assistant folks set around the door. He's 20-something, and probably youthful, like a teenager stuffed into one of his dad's business shirts. His haircut uh, is barely regulation. In one hand, he holds a tablet computer showing his boss's day planner. It's packed. The man evidently does not sleep. Marion? You can come now. You can come through now. The office door closes behind them with an unusually heavy mechanical clunk, as if the whole thing is part of a machine built into the office walls. While Marion takes the indicated chair and sets her back down, the assistant turns and does some confusing additional things to the door, causing it to make several further strange noises. O5s have non trivial privacy and security requirements. The office is spacious, but somehow contrives to be dark despite two big corners of window and broad daylight outside. The walls are on bookshelves and dark wood paneling, perfectly stylish, but a style from the 90s. A little worn and not yet old enough to be fashionable again. As for the fellow behind the desk, well, an L5 never looks like you imagine. Wagon takes a deep breath. So, what's the topic? All I... God was a meeting invitation, no agenda or subject. I mean, L5 says jump, you jump, but... Looking to her right, she notices that the assistant, without saying anything or making undue no noises, has set his tablet down on a table, produced a gun, and then aimed at her head. Marion starts up talking. She sits still in her chair for a little while, absorbing the change of space, like her heart rate it rises to hummingbirds, and then starts to flatten again. Okay... She hazards. She licks her lips and grips her FC armrest. Otherwise, sang perfectly still, waiting for another prompt. The assistant's face is totally neutral now, like this is just how meetings go. Maybe it is for people up here. Who are you? 058 asks her. Byron blanks. What? Oh god. Let me rephrase. 058 says, Marion Wheeler, 49, with love of a husband and two boys in tow, likes camping, hiking, and ornithology. Boring mother with perfect airtight background and financials. As far back as we can examine, you've got full foundation traditionals, which we've never issued. 
including access to a list of installation and rooms which some of these is locations don't exist or were torn down decades ago. At least one hasn't been built yet. Yet you've got the front room um, door. You've got the front door key to it. That's before we get to your SV access control list, which I can only term as egregious. So you're a spy, and your objectives are misaligned with ours. And Clay wanted to cut that X Xi3 loose on you, but I was able to bring him around. I talked him into a face-to-face. -face. I thought there was a slim chance that if we locked you in a bomb-proof room and asked politely, you'd have, have the good sense to spare yourself the rest. Wyron has long since stopped listening. You dullard, she says. Now she can finally speak. I'm the chief of antimimetics. We don't... <clears throat> we don't have an antimimetics division, Clay says. Yes, we do. We do. It says, we have a mimetics division, a telecontainment, a telecontainment, the mission, fire services, Ops A, Ops B, E personnel, D, E personnel, and two dozen others. We don't have an anti mimetics division. Do we have an ironing division? Wayne asks. She has says hopefully. No. Oh, alright, well, try this. Why didn't the anti magnetics division would show up in the listing? This is just a cover story, Clay says to 058, not taking his mind his eyes off Martin. It's a good one, but she's had it worked out in advance. Clay lose a piece, says oh, says the 05. Grudgingly, Clay does so. Biden re relaxes fractionally. There are SCP these with dangerous magnetic properties. They are contagious cons concepts which require a containment just like any physical threat. They get inside your head and ride your mind to reach other minds, right? Right, all fives of eight says. You could name a score of SCPs fitting this description without even thinking. There are SCPs with anti mimetic properties. Mine goes on. There are ideas which cannot be spread. There are indeed are phenomena which harvest and consume information, particularly information about themselves. You take a poor lorry photo of one, it'll never develop. You describe you write a description down with a pen and on paper and hand it to someone. But you've but what you've written and turns out to be hieroglyphs and nobody can understand them, not even you. You can look directly at one and it won't be even be invisible, but you'll still perceive nothing there. Dreams you can't hold on to and secrets you could never share and lies and living conspiracy is It's a conceptual subculture of ideas consuming other ideas and sometimes segments of reality, sometimes people. Hmm. Which makes them a threat. That's all there is to it, really. anti moves are dangerous and we don't understand them. Therefore, there are, they are part of the problem. Hence my division. We can always do the sideways thinking that's needed to combat something which can literally eat your combat training. 058 stares back for a moment. Clay fidgets, disliking and distrusting the story. But the O5 seems more open to the concept. Name one, he says. Name an anti mimetics SCP. SCP-55, Mayan, and says promptly. There is no SCP-55. Again, yes there is. There isn't. 
SV numbers aren't assigned uh, and, and sequentially. There are gaps. The number hasn't been assigned. It's Nazi precision. We have enough to be concerned about without object in numerology. We have SV666 and SV13, but there's no SV1 and there's no SV55. Clay058 says, you should look at this. He starts his monitor so Clay can see the file that he has just retrieved. Clay bends over and reads from top to bottom. Stunned, he scrolls back and reads it all a second time. But the file's dated from 2008. It's got all the right flags and signatures. It's keyed and coded. It's real. You've seen this before? Never in my life, 058 says. As far as I can remember, anyway. On the other hand, if the content is accurate, both of us have probably seen it a dozens of times. That isn't possible. Why are there really spits? For Christ's sake, Clay, how long have you been working here? But this SCP is as powerful, he begins. Yes. Who wrote the file? The O5 finishes. And for that matter, how was the interview conducted? Who is by Arthur Lomio Hughes? And most importantly, how do you, Miss Mrs. Wheeler, retain a knowledge of any of this? But Hughes wrote the file. He's dead. What happened to him? You don't want to know. There is a very long pause while both L58 and Assistant reached react to this. In fact, they passed through a long, discreet sequence of reactions. Ign Ignatians at the seeming rudeness, confusing at rulers in, in caution in front of sinister superiors. Surprised at the magnitude of the, the claim, pure disbelief, comprehension, and finally horror. What? O five eight asks carefully, "What happen if we did know?" It would happen to you as well. As for the rest of your questions, we manage at at emergently. You know, we have class A amnestics people who very badly need to forget things. Of course, you. Who could forget about class A amnestics? Well, in antibiotics, we have a different pill. People who need to remember things that would otherwise be impossible to remember. Nestix. Class W, X, Y, and Z. Same Greek word it as the word mnemonic. The M is silence. In her bag, her phone beeps again. The nod of approval from the O5. Why and, and reaches into her bag and turns her phone off, acknowledging the prompt this time. And instead of responding it, she pulls a blister pack from another pocket and pops a pill out. It's, it's, it's hexagonal and green. She holds it up and is satisfied to see a flicker of recognition on, on O58's face. He's beginning to put it back together. Mayan says, These are Class W Nessics, the weakest, suitable for continual use, two pills per day. Go down to the science pharmacy and ask. The pharmacist will claim they don't stock it, says Jing. They're misremembering. T double them, tell them to double check. O five eight size. And now I think I get it. I see why we're having conversations at all. Whoops. I heard that a little bit wrong. Yes, Martin says. Popping a second pill out and heading it over to him. And it's because you miss a dose, you're supposed to be on these. Same as me and everybody else on my staff. It's the only way we can work. You forgot to take a pill. And you forgot all the information that, that the pills were helping you retain. You forgot why you were taking them. Who gave them to you. Where to get more. You forgot about me and my entire Earth apartment. And now I have to bring you up, back up, bring you up to speed. Hmm. 
And if I take this, I'll remember this whole conversation. And we won't have to have it again. Hopefully not. Play pipes up. Uh, should I be taking those? Sorry, kiddo. Need to know. Maybe you're an O5 yourself. He swallows the pill. My head swallows her. There's two. SCP. So, what is SCP 55? SCP 55 is nothing, Ryan says, now relaxing entirely. SCP 55 is, as described in the file, a powerful information and auto suppressor. As far as experimentation has uncovered, it can only be defined in negative of terms. We can only record what it isn't. We know it isn't safe or Euclid. We know it isn't round or square, or green or silver. We know it isn't stupid, and we know it isn't alone. What we do know is that it's weak. It's weak because it's the only antimimetic agent in our possession which has a physical entry in the files. We have paper records of the thing. We have containment procedures. It's not safe, which means it's, it's dangerous, but it's contained. O five eight blinks. You have procedures? Where? Ryan points at her head. Then how many other anti memes are there? How much more dangerous do they get? Ten that I know of. Statistically probably at least five more and I I don't know of. This does not count the anti memetic and these freely remote roaming the halls, not under containment. There are at least two in this room with us right now. Don't look. I said don't look. It's pointless. O58 does an impressive job of controlling himself, keeping his attention focused on, on Marianne. Or is that Marlin? I'm not sure. Clay doesn't fare so well, and quickly leaves the whole room, even check I can behind his back. Making an ass of himself essentially. He finds nothing. He looks baffled. There is an invisible monster which follows me around and likes to get likes to eat my memories, Orion explains. SCP-4987. Don't look it up, it's not there. I've learned to manage with it. It's like a demanding pet. I reduce taste memories on purpose so it doesn't eat anything important. Like my passwords on how to make coffee. And what's the other one? With another nod from um, 058, Marion goes to her bag again. This time she falls out a gun and shoots Clay twice in the heart. More aghast and in pain, <clears throat> Clay collapses sharply against the bookcase behind him. Pulling his head around to face is Marion. He manages. How did you know? Marion stands, aims more carefully, and shoots him a third or time. This time in the head. 05 a uh, Again, does an impressive job of not reacting. That's Clay's gun, he deadpans. You saw it from him. It's tricky to steal a firearm on this heavy from someone without them noticing, Marion explains, unloading it and carefully setting it down. But stealing a firearm and then stealing their memory of the theft is a little easier. Like I said, a pet. Some pets are dumb enough that they can be trained. Yes, 058 says evenly. That much I'd guess, but why? Because you were supposed to be taking class W and Nessex. Oops, I mean, Nest 6, Marion says. You can't skip a dose of class W Nest 6. I've tried. You can postpone a dose, but you can't forget unless someone actually prevents you from taking it. The 
There is only one person who can get close enough for you to do that. That's your assistant. Ever want to ask him how long he'd been working here? He didn't answer, Opavate says. I thought you were being rhetorical. He doesn't work here, Mayan says. He's an anti-meme. Since when do you have an assistant? You don't have an assistant, Brent. Look at this office. It's got one desk. You've got a receptionist outside. She's the one who screens your calls and schedules your meetings. Where does Clavin sit? Where does he fit? Don't learn yourself. You're human, and these things are reduction incarnate. You need to think like a space alien to get around them. Hmm. Oh, five, I've eight asked a question which, in any other workplace, would be absurd. Is he dead? That doesn't sound too absurd to me. Oh dear lord, how long does this go on? There's another one? I think this is going to be the end of this for today. Maybe, Myron says. I can put this corpse in our research queue and we'll see what... Uh, and we'll see what we can see when we open them up. There's morality here, though. They're like parallel universes sharing the same space. It's conceptual versus concrete. Figuratively, figurative versus physical. It's very unusual for things to cross over. I don't know what Clay was, but he had a human body, which instantly makes him weird. Even by our standards. As ever the search for stalemate continues, I'll let you know if we get any closer. Any side effects of these pills? Of eight asks. Nausea and dramatically increased risk of pancreatic cancer. Iron says, and very bad dreams. All right. I'm going to. Bookmark this. And put in a thing. So that maybe I can make a video about the rest of this story another time. But for now, that's the end of this video. This has been SV55, a, well, I kind of forgot, but can you please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to this video? I'll probably forget it, it, it about this SV by tomorrow. I'll do a poll and see if you guys want to continue the story about Marion or Marlon. I can't read too well. I'll see you next time.